You're watching Tau Flader Mouse. Welcome back, Tau Flader folks. Jeff and Officer Greg out here with you. Very hot day. Hey, we're bringing you something a little bit different today. Um, you might have noticed the bright uh, color of this shotgun, a little unusual for, uh, for our channel. This is a less lethal shotgun. This is just like the ones we use at uh, my work when we need some less lethal interaction with, uh, with bad guys. Uh, the purpose behind this shotgun is to fire beanbag rounds. I'm sure this is probably no surprise to anyone. These little beanbag rounds are a little Kevlar baggie. Uh, we'll show you some a little bit in a minute. A little Kevlar baggie full of a number nine lead shot. And this thing flies about 300 feet per second. It hits you with a nice good wallop. So it's kind of like being uh, punched in the gut. But it allows us to stop someone who doesn't need to be shot without us approaching them and fighting them, uh, you know, fist to fist. If I, if I got a guy, a crazy guy in the middle of the street and he's holding a knife, am I going to walk up to him and uh, hopefully box it out with him? Or am I going to stand off at a safe distance and uh, zap him with one of these little beanbag rounds? So that's the purpose behind these things. Uh, we've got a couple of different ones for you here today, a little Kevlar baggie, and then some of the newer generation ones here also come with a little green chalk in them. These are designed, of course, that uh, when there's a group of people, let's say it's a big protest somewhere and someone's throwing rocks and bottles at police officers, uh, we can zap them with this. Not only does it knock that guy down, but it also marks him so we can move in and arrest him uh, shortly thereafter. So um, this is a standard old firearm. This is a Remington 870 12 gauge. It will chamber a standard old 12 gauge round. However, we never do that, just like I just did. I just wanted to show you that you can put a standard 12 gauge round in there. This is no different than any other shotgun other than this bright orange color. So any officer, uh, any agency's policy is that when an officer is deploying this shotgun, he does not have any live ammunition on him so that nothing can be mistaken and accidentally put in there uh, in the, in the, under stress and uh, accidentally shoot somebody with a live round. So. Bean backgrounds only on the officer, the only thing that will fit in that shotgun. So. Okay, so I've brought my good buddy Doug out here today. Uh, Doug, formerly of the uh, 22nd Special Forces Regiment. Hey, uh, Doug's going to demonstrate for us today some of the places that we're not supposed to shoot people. Uh, when we have these less lethal rounds, they are still deadly. They still can cause great bodily injury to an individual if they are used incorrectly. And, you know, you've seen video of protesters who've been uh, zapped by police officers, usually in foreign countries where the round will hit them in the eyes or, uh, you know, even if they're wearing goggles or those brave masks, you know, um, they'll, they'll get shot in the face or other parts of their body that can actually cause damage. And we don't want to do that. We want to temporarily stop that guy. It's just sort of like punching him. And we want to move in and arrest him and we want him to be okay afterwards. So on Doug here. Doug's wearing his protective eye goggles. That's probably smart. Police officers are directed never to shoot at the head or face with these beanbag rounds. We obviously never shoot at the neck because you can imagine taking one right there in the neck could, off, could do some damage. The chest and the abdomen is good to go as well as of course the arms and the legs are good to go. We don't want to aim at the groin and then if the guy is turned away from us for some reason and, we, and he had to be zapped we don't want to shoot the spine area too. That might uh, cause some long-term damage. So we're going to demonstrate a couple of good places on our on our buddy Doug, see how these rounds do, and show you what kind of force they actually hit with. They're uh, they're not toys, and you don't want to be uh, popping each other in the backyard with these things. They are not fun. So let's get to it. What's our what's the range? What distance? Five to sixty feet. Five to sixty feet. So where where are we at there? About this is fifteen feet. I just measured it with my phone. Oh, okay. We're at fifteen feet. Um, so we're three times the minimum distance. We're at a very safe distance. If uh, Doug was protesting something. Okay, I'm ready when you are. Here we go. Beanbag round. Is that one of the chalk ones? This is not. This is a standard. Okay. Chalk okay. free. When you're ready. I'm ready. These beaten bags have a tail on them, which is supposed to cause drag stabilization so that they fly straight through the air and make it more accurate. In our test, we did find the bean bag rounds to be relatively accurate. You, the viewer, can clearly see that the tail has little or no effect on its aerodynamics to keep it flying straight, though. You can see our Kevlar sock here, full of number nine shot. 
This little tail here, this little skirt, is actually left on there on purpose, not trimmed off. That helps uh, create a little bit of stabilization as the thing's flying downrange. And it walloped Doug right here. You can see the little wad okay. followed it downrange. Let's, uh, let's slice this one open here for you so that you can see inside. Oh, yeah, look at that. All the number nine shot. So you can imagine without that bag what that would do. That stuff would spread, but it yeah. would be very, very, very dangerous. And just this little Kevlar sock is what keeps that. This is supposed to be 40 grams of, of total weight on this. You yeah. know, that's a lot of load. Traveling at, you know, it's about the speed of an airsoft BB. But, you, but 40 grams, you yeah. know. And I'll point out, too, they used to call this less than lethal. And now they've changed it to less lethal because although it's designed to not kill someone, it is still, of course, deadly if misused. So that's why we want to avoid certain areas on that. That could, that could cause some significant harm to a bad guy. And maybe he's not bad enough where we don't want to do that kind of harm. So we call it less lethal because it could still do that. Uh, it could still be deadly in the... Uh, wrong circumstances. You want to try one of the chalk marker ones? Yeah, let's try that. It's a super sock. It's the exact same thing, but it's been, uh, it's given, they put you a little bit of green chalk in there so we can mark the That's, people. Someone was thinking there, you know? <laughs> yeah, they were. Let's see what it does on Doug's dark shirt down there. Okay. I'm ready. All right, here we go. Much of a mark. Much of a mark. The beanbag with the marking powder actually looks really cool flying through the air. It kind of looks like a comet. The impact on this shot should have been exactly the same as the first shot. The only difference is that it hit a weak spot on the dummy and tore through the skin. So you can see uh, young Douglas here has a hole in his shirt that gives you a little bit of an idea about how hard that thing is hitting him. But look at that chalk round. You can barely even see it. Under normal light, you really can't see the mark at all, but if you shine it with a UV flashlight, the mark lights up like a neon sign. And it should show up regardless of the color of the clothing. I might not have mentioned earlier too, our agency policy and most agencies, um, the effective range of this thing is between five feet and 60 feet. So that's what a meter and a half out to about 18 and a half meters. Um, you don't want to be too close to, to with this thing. You don't want to be contact distance and pop somebody with it. And out past about 60 feet, uh, you're losing. It's it's just losing all of its velocity and its oomph and doesn't really have any effect. So. Okay, what are you demonstrating now? What we're going to do now is deliberately, believe it or not, Doug's not real. So we're going to actually shoot him in the goggles to show why you would never want to put one of these at someone's face. Even, even when they're wearing goggles, you know, mm -hmm. assumed. Go Those types of goggles are not very good protection against impact. No, they're splatter goggles. Yeah. Okay, let's see if they're accurate enough to be able to hit something like that. Hopefully. And you're ready? Yeah, I'm ready. In this test, we wanted to see if the beanbag rounds were accurate enough if the uh, user was deliberately aiming at a particular spot on the goggles. And yes, they are accurate enough. As you can see, these types of goggles are completely ineffective at stopping a beanbag round. At the very least, this person would have been blinded. All right, so here's our beanbag. Hit Doug right here in the goggles. So these safety goggles, safety specs, did not work out so good for him. Busted the lenses out of him, went right through, and zapped him right there next to his eye. So you can see why you would never, ever, ever want to shoot something like this at, at someone when you're just trying to knock them down and get them to stop doing what they're doing. So that could have been lethal if it had been a, a real person. Okay, let's, let's see what it does to uh, a block of clay, modeling clay. I bet you it'll leave a dent. Yeah, yeah. When you're ready? Uh, yes, sir, I'm ready. We tested the beanbag rounds on a variety of different targets. Things that are kind of familiar to users, such as a block of clay and, and things like that. This gives the viewer an idea of how much energy these actually have. This cool, perfectly round hole almost looks like a soda can could be set down in there. You can see the beanbag round back in there. This is some pretty dense clay too. It's dried about 
fifty percent of its usual uh, softness. It's hard to keep it at a consistent temp or a moisture level, especially here where it's one hundred and fifty degrees. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So rather hard clay, not soft gooey clay, and that thing burrowed all the way through. Just about wanted to come out the back. So nice big hole gives you an idea about how much energy that thing's carrying with it. I, I thought it would just leave a dent about two inches deep. So that really surprised me that it had that much energy. And you could see it was accurate, you know, at, at that range and everything. Yeah, you can actually kind of see the styrations, striations in there where uh, where the little Kevlar bag has slid along on its way down. That's wild. To show misuse of these rounds by, uh, if it hits your skull or something, you know, we're going to use a coconut. In, as case our... your, in case your skull is coconut-like. Yes. Well, it, it's good enough for York Spray, and it's good enough for us. Whoa. Wow. I think you can get a lime in there. <laughs> lime in the I coconut. I didn't think it was going to explode like that. Me neither. Again, the targets that we selected are familiar with people from around the world. People know how tough a coconut is. And if a beanbag round can go right through a coconut, think of what it would do to a person's skull if these were deliberately shot at someone's head. So you can see this coconut all broken apart. So uh, coconut's pretty strong and that thing just shattered this little guy. Inside here you can see where they've put the artificial coconut flavoring. This thing sat in uh, Jeff's truck, got extremely <laughs> hot over the last couple of days so it totally smells like ass. <laughs> Woo! It's bad. Do not store coconuts in a hot car. No. <laughs> no. What we want to find out is if, if an umbrella, which is commonly used in protests as kind of a way to mask the protester and also maybe protect them from pepper balls or whatever, if a umbrella will stop, you know, deflect a beanbag round. Pepper balls, huh? This is one of the people, who, this is a request from Matthias from CN Arsenal. He wanted to... Oh, fantastic. Here you go, Matthias. He also wanted to put a lime in a coconut, too, but that's another story. <laughs> I think he meant something else. Not much left to that coconut. Yeah. Where are you going to be aiming at? I'm going to try and see if I can hit one of those little spines of the umbrella. Okay. Uh, right about where his uh, sternum would be. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I'm ready when you are. Here we go. Wow. Wow. Now this was probably one of the more surprising of the tests. Yes, an umbrella can actually protect you from getting hit with a beanbag round. See, Doug's holding a British style soccer ball. We Yanks call it football. <laughs> oh boy. You can tell by Doug's t-shirt he's a uh, Manchester fan. <laughs> Let's see what it'll do with a beanbag round though. Hopefully that demonstrates the power behind these little beanbag rounds. They're not a toy. Don't buy them and shoot your friends with them on uh, on New Year's. Uh, they can do a lot of damage and they hurt. So, um, you know, they're designed for bad guys so that we don't hurt them too bad, but uh, not a toy. So next time you see these things being carried on the news or on TV, you know that police are going after somebody, but somebody that does not need to be shot down for good. So. And if, well, if they're shooting someone in the head, you know they're violating some kind of policy, at least human right policy, really. At least in the U.S., yes. Yeah, yeah. And you see a lot of videos from around the world where the police don't seem to care. It's, uh, it's that, or next thing you do, you just pull a rifle out and work on your crowd. But, but I, I even saw a, a protester, quote, quote, uh, from the United States, a woman who was shot in the face with one. Yes. Uh, and so it, it, it has happened here, too. Yes, and that is actually almost always caused by accident, the things aren't very accurate. So outside of about 50 feet, you can be aiming for the torso, and if a person is moving around, ju juking and jiving, uh, they can actually get one in the face uh, inadvertently, and it's not good. So we have actually transitioned for, for our riot control, we've transitioned to different, more accurate weapons, but uh, we still deploy the, uh, the beanbag 12-gauge shotgun in some police cars, uh, just in case there's you know, somebody out there who just kind of needs to be punched down until he can be handcuffed. We don't want to wrestle with him. 
that would get one of our guys injured. So, all right. Until next time. Go. <laughs> See you later, tough later, folks. It's all food and drink to Greg. <laughs> <laughs>